Okay, moving along. Just like to start with the topic today, business as usual. Um, but it's not really business as usual. As you've already seen, the world has changed. And if we just do business as usual, we risk uh, a serious impact to our business. If we choose to put our head in the sand and ignore change, there is a big risk um, that we will be detrimentally impacted. Going to start with a little video to put it in context. The world is online. We are connected. We are collaborative. We are one world. Of the 7 billion of us, nearly 2.5 billion are internet users, 6.5 billion mobile users, and nearly 2 billion of us are using social media networks. We are also changing profoundly. Our digital consumer behaviour is being influenced by transformative shifts in digital platforms, content, demographics and marketing. We are one new world. Nearly half the total world internet users are now from Asia Pacific, and in 2014, for the first time, consumers in Asia Pacific spent more on e-commerce purchases than those in North America. Internet users in China total more than twice the USA population. There, internet is mainly via mobile and internet messaging is the top online activity. In the Middle East and Africa, almost half of all web users are mobile, with Saudi Arabia generating almost half of the tweets in the region. Brazil ranks number one as the most social country in the world, with Facebook now being the most popular. Snapchat, the mobile instant photo and video app, has grown to over 100 million users, mainly teens, who send 500 million photos and videos every day. We're going mobile. We're social on our mobiles. We're searching on our mobiles. And we're buying on our mobiles. Mobile gadgets are getting smaller and smarter, and social networks have high mobile penetration with a growing number of mobile-only networks like Instagram and Snapchat. Singing sensation Beyonce ignored traditional media altogether with the launch of her latest album, choosing to launch it to her 8 million mobile Instagram followers with one simple word, surprise, generating 1.2 million tweets in two hours and topping the sales of her previous album. And nowhere is mobile and digital technology being adopted more quickly than in the travel industry, where nearly half the people looking for travel information are doing so on their mobile devices. In the third quarter of 2014 alone, more than 150 million travelers downloaded the various TripAdvisor apps. TripAdvisor now integrates La Fourchette for restaurant bookings, Viator for tours and activities, and Uber to help travellers get from A to B. E-commerce via mobile is also growing, with more than half of online travellers purchasing tickets on tablets and smartphones. 2014 saw Virgin Atlantic launch a groundbreaking trial of wearable technology where concierge staff delivered a high-tech personal passenger experience using Google Glass and Sony smartwatches. Smartwatch trip notifications have been developed by Expedia and smartwatch boarding passes are available via Vueling at selected destinations around the world. We are social and we are sharing. We enrich our experiences by sharing them with others. For more than 70% of travellers, recommendations from family or reviews on social media are the most important source of information when planning a trip. Social commerce is growing particularly in Asia Pacific. In China, WeChat has integrated an e-wallet. Disruptive businesses based on the sharing economy are also growing tremendously. Airbnb has booked over 10 million nights since it launched four years ago, and Uber, despite a year of controversies, is well on track to impact mobility in 100 cities within five years. Consumers in Asia and Latin America are the top regions, and the millennials are the top age group most likely to share products and services within the sharing economy. Okay, if you've not uh, seen that video, that video is, is a portion uh, of one that I took from the Digital Tourism Think Tank. And if you've not been onto that website, it's one that certainly all of you should be aware of for some great resources, videos, trends, statistics, uh, and a whole lot of good advice with regard digital uh, and tourism working together. 
Okay, what I want to pick up on today, and I'm going to be fairly quick and snappy over this, just to kind of touch upon a few of the key themes which have already been talked about. I really want to focus in on the customer journey, uh, the digital journey that your users, your customers have with you. Roz already said it, not just pre-visit, but during the visit and the post-visit as well. What are they actually doing with you? Um, Got a bit of a diagram on screen before, on screen already. You've probably seen things like this. It's used in a lot of kind of models as to how to deal and understand your customer. But think about it purely from a digital perspective. Not all of them are there yet, but it's fast coming up the ranks, and we need to start thinking about digital engagement throughout the whole process. Very quickly, let's start looking at the pre-visit. And I can't stress enough. Uh, this guy on the screen, Google is your friend, okay? Not everyone always thinks like that, but if he's not our friend, we're in trouble because of how much potential traffic or not Google may send us. Google is the starting point for an awful lot of travel and tourism and hospitality type searches. Again, play along, I know where this is going. Hands up if you typically will use Google to search for stuff. Thank you for playing along. Um, I'm almost frightened to ask, hands up if nobody likes to use Google. Okay, as expected. So Google is the starting point, and all businesses need to be aware of that, that this is how an awful lot of tourism establishments are being perceived through Google. Even if I know your name, I'll very often turn to Google and search that name on Google. Even if I know your web address, I'll very often ignore that and search your name on Google. So how Google portrays you is how your customer at first touching point understands your business and begins to think, are you any good? Should I use you? Why not the competition? Are you what you say you are? All of these things through Google. So a few ways in which Google can help you. 90% of the UK search engine market, first of all, is driven by this thing. Um, so yes, other search engines are available, but be aware of the dominance that this involves. Google is now optimized for mobile. Um, next month, Google is factoring into its search engine algorithm, are you a good website for people's mobile phones? And if the answer is yes, you will get a boost in Google search engines. If the answer is no, you will not get that boost, and so all of your competitors who have optimized their website for mobile will now be above you. Again, you may have already seen it. When you browse Google on your mobile, on the results, it says next to the listing, mobile optimized, mobile friendly. Now, I'm not going to do a show of hands because I don't want to embarrass anyone, but I've looked at an awful lot of websites, many of which will belong to many of you. And still, not enough people are optimizing their, mo their, their websites for mobile. And I don't just mean it's fine, it works on the iPhone, it shrinks down. Yes, it does, and I have to pinch and zoom and scroll, and I can't quick click the links, and ah, this is frustrating. Because that is not a mobile site. That is a site that you think you get away with because it displays on a mobile. Think mobile first. Make sure things work. There's a geeky technique in our industry called responsive design. One website that works on a big screen and adapts accordingly to a small screen. That is what we all need to achieve. Optimization for mobile because it's not going away and it's only getting bigger and better. Whether for your experience of the customers or arguably to get Google to rank you better. Think mobile. The other thing, I can't read that, there's problem with this. Um, video. How many of you do video? Let's fact, give me a show of hands. How many of you in the room actively have a strategy to include video as part of your online marketing? Give me a show of hands. Not enough of you buy a mile. Ross said, we are visual creatures. We love the visual. We share the visual. We click like when we see it on Facebook. We share it with our friends. Facebook is optimized for, for video. You'll see it yourself when you're browsing on your mobile, again, that the videos auto-play the videos start playing. Um, so we are consumed by video. And again, if you're not doing it, you're missing out. You're also missing out from Google because Google owns YouTube. What is Google's primary aim? To promote its own content, to get more people staying on Google, watching Google content. That includes video, YouTube video, because Google prioritizes it. And again, my argument is, could you simply tell a story better using video? Nobody wants to read the pages and pages of the report. Maybe the one page, even better, give me it in a one minute video. Because that's what people are happy browsing and watching on their desktops and on their mobiles. So think video. 
ratings and reviews and maps. Take away these two points uh, carefully today. At a conference recently by Google, they said that two of the main trends of consumers dealing with tourism industries, what do, tour what, what do, what do they want? We want ratings and we want maps. Um, we want ratings to get third party validation that you are a good business, that you, you are what you say you are because other people have backed you up. And we want maps. Why? Because well, with a map, I can confirm myself that you are indeed a stone's throw from the beach. Or that you are indeed in a thriving up and coming neighbourhood. Or that you are indeed in a nice part of the town, not you know, the last place I think of going. The consumers now do all of that for themselves because they don't trust you. The ratings and reviews and the maps, now I trust you because I can confirm all of that myself and deal with it. So if nothing else, two takeaways for you, get ratings and reviews, not just on the likes of TripAdvisor and on third party sites, incorporate these into your own websites. Allow people to rate you on your own website. Don't just list the nice testimonials that you've handpicked for your testimonials page, which nobody believes because everybody knows that's what you've done. Bring in the third party validation to your own website and stand by it. And make sure you have a damn good map right on the home page because that's what people are looking for. I want to know where you are. I want to see where you are. A couple of quick examples and I'll be quick here because I realize I need to jump back and forth. Should really a T, T, I know what I'll do, I'll try something. Should really teed this one up a little bit better beforehand. This is me doing a search for Inverary Castle. Now I'm not picking on them uh, in general, I purposely didn't pick an Ayrshire company um, for fear of favouritism. Um, and this company we're actually doing a little bit of work with right now. So my general search, I know who they are, but I still search Google for Inverary Castle. What do we get? We get a whole load of stuff. Down the left hand side, we get all the stuff we expect to see, their website, some nice little images. Down the right hand side, we get a whole load of new stuff. We get a map, we get an image, we get the fact that they are rated four stars. Now these four stars aren't coming from TripAdvisor, they're coming from Google. Google is now incorporating its own rating systems. And the big problem in Verady Castle have now got, um, you'll notice at the bottom here it says, are you the business owner? Which means they are currently not. All of this information they could own, but they currently don't. And I'm glad that they haven't gone through what they're going to go through before today so I can still show this live demo. Otherwise it would have said, they are indeed the owner. So all of this data, these stars, these nine Google reviews, which they can't reply to, they can't respond to, they can do nothing with because they don't own the data. I'm going to quickly compare that as I jump back to this one. This is the Citizen M in Glasgow. Again, exactly the same type of search. I search for the company, because that's what people do. Down the left, we get all the websites. Over on the right, we get the image, we get the nice little map, we get a whole load of reviews. One of the reasons is because they control it, they encourage it. Some of these reviews you can put names against, and right down the bottom, where it said previously, is this your business, it doesn't say that, and instead, it gives Citizen, Citizen M's latest blog post all on the home page of Google, I've not yet gone anywhere. I'm still just on Google searching for a company and I know all about it, where it is, how they're reviewed, what they tend to talk about in terms of the latest blog post. All of this because this is a company who understands Google. An awful lot of this comes from what's called a Google Plus page. Hands up if you've got a Google Plus page for business. Hands down, hands up if you don't know what a Google Plus page is and please be honest. Thank you for being honest. All Google Plus is, is Google's version of Facebook. Google wants to be Facebook. Google wants to have some of that capability. And a Google Plus page is a little bit like having a Facebook page. And if you've got it and you tell Google about it, when people search for your company, out comes Google Plus content. Your latest update, your ratings and reviews, which you control. You don't control them in terms of uh, manipulating them but well, you control them in terms of responding to them, taking ownership, replying to people, giving comment, all of which is great things to do. And very, very quickly before I move on, just because I think these guys do it very well, let's go and have a look at them on the map. We click the map and we get exactly where the Citizen M Hotel is in Glasgow. And again, if this isn't you know, the case for your business, then make it so, because everyone wants to know exactly where you are on things like Google Maps. And then you can do some cool things. Then you can click on the ratings and reviews and you can actually go and look at it on Street View. And again, people do this. 
loads of people do this. And you can zoom out, probably not the best. We can, we can see where they are, you can look around the streets, you can see the, the adjacent buildings, the fact that there's an arrest happening right outside. <laughs> I bet they wish they could change that Google map. Um, but do you know what? To their credit, look what else they do. They realise, as any of you could do, that I could go from Street View right inside using the same technology and browse the lobby. And exactly the same technology. I've walked off the virtual street into the virtual building. And any of you can do this. It's not expensive. A few hundred pounds. Speak to Google um, promoted uh, photographers. Speak to photographers who know this stuff. It's not difficult and it's not expensive. I can jump up and have a little look at the bedroom which on a personal level is incredibly small and dinky, but it's nice, very stylistic. And I'm absolutely sure, as Ross said, that they have tables at the right height for laptops, for plugging in and ethernet, because they get this stuff. They really do. So that, very briefly, let me jump back. That is what I mean by understanding and doing Google well. Embrace it, all of that, and I'd never left Google. This is just only while doing my research on you, and my goodness, I love you already. Without going anywhere, without looking at your website. Begin to embrace this stuff, all through Google. Um, Pre-visit, what else can we do? Well, again, not, some of this isn't rocket science, that comes later. Um, get yourself onto the relevant directories. Get yourself onto TripAdvisor. Uh, and embrace TripAdvisor. I know many of you hate it. I know you, and I know you hate when somebody says something bad, but look at it as an opportunity. It was said earlier, it's not difficult to get 89 people, or whatever the number was, that you know would rate you well, that have had a great experience with you, to give them a little nudge and to come along and to get your ratings right back up to where they should be. Uh, look at booking.com if you're looking to do any sort of online booking. Get yourself listed on the Visit Scotland directory at the national level. And beyond national level, don't forget the locality. Well, where are we? Well, I'm a b and in Largs. So put yourself onto the business directory on the local sites that do exist in most local towns, like the explorelargs.com site, which exists for all of the tourism and businesses of Largs to promote themselves and to promote the town of Largs all of which is available for you to do and for you to start promoting yourself so more people find you. More people find you and know what you're about. I loved the quote earlier. Uh, Guy, I think it was you that said it about understanding website analytics and you were delighted to see thousands of hits to your website and then you realised half of them were yourself. That was great. You're not alone with that attitude. We speak to so many businesses who, again, we kind of, you know, really upset when we point out what they're actually looking at. Um, and please don't take offence by this, but uh, in our industry, you know, the number of hits you get, hits stands for how idiots track success. Because hits mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. You can pay to get an awful lot of people going to your website, which achieves you nothing. No return on investment, no bookings, no engagement, nothing. So just be careful about how you measure things. But get yourself visible, get yourself onto some of these sites. Social media, I'm hardly even going to mention because you know my thoughts on all of this. Get on the channels, get using them, get using them well. Social media is global. Why not go and speak to people in China? Why not go and speak to Americans looking to come over and play some golf? Why not? Because it's all there for the taking. It's all doable. And everybody should be using it well. One little tip for you, and again, it's a general throwaway tip. Stop promoting you, 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 you. There's a time and a place for it. But think about social media, the clues in the title. It's social. So think about help, think about sharing, think about promoting the community, think about promoting the country, your sector. Yes, there's a time to promote yourself, um, but think about the bigger picture as well. Far too many businesses jump onto social media and simply try and spam. It will not work for you. Be a player in the industry, be a player in the sector. To somewhat contradict that, there are times when you should aggressively use social media to go and pay and find the potential customer. This, I realise many of you won't be able to read this from the back of the room. This was a screen dump that I actually took a couple of years ago um, when I was doing a little session. In fact, uh, it was down in uh, the... Where, where were we? Where's, where's uh, Moira? Where were we? We were down at the race course, that's right. And we were looking at tourism. Um, and uh, I was playing a, a game with the people who had... And again, please nobody take offence. Uh, the concept of the Homecoming Scotland video, which was being used to promote Scotland to overseas. 
you know, lovely little video. It was all about Sean Connery uh, and Rolling Hillside and uh, Chris, uh, th uh, Chris Hoy's thighs um, and uh, the SRU rugby team. Uh, and again, I was playing with them saying, is this the way we should be promoting things? You know, with the very obvious stereotypes. And yes, there is a time and a place for it. But one of the things I was encouraging people to think about is, well, we could spend a fortune hiring all these celebrities and putting this video out to America or we could do a little bit of aggressive Facebook advertising targeting people in the United States, 35 and above, um, who are interested in golf, whiskey, Scotland, Sean Connery, rugby union, Lulu, travel, tart and Chris Hoyer tourism. And instantly it gave us 10 million. Um, now, again, it's probably not the best example, but it's the starting point of using Facebook well if you want to, to go and define the audience, understand who you're trying to target and go and get them. Go and put a message in front of only those type of people. And that is just the basics of Facebook advertising. You can do some amazing stuff with it. Um, you can do things which are called uh, similar audiences. So if you have an existing database of 5,000 customers, you can give that to Facebook and say, don't target them, but target people like them. And it will go and search its database and find maybe a few hundred of them, maybe a few thousand of them, and based on its algorithms, work out loads of people just like your existing customer, and that's who they'll send your marketing message to. Absolutely perfect, and the results we've had with ourselves and some of our clients has been astounding using what's called similar audience targeting. The other thing you can do is what's called, basically called remarketing. And you'll have seen this yourself. A lot of people get tripped up by this. Remarketing is basically the concept of giving uh, the visitor something based on where they've been in the past. And this always trips people up because if I'm browsing the computer downstairs in the living room, I'll see through advertising the presents that my wife's going to get me for my birthday. Because they're advertised to me. Why? Because she's been on looking at them on Amazon. Because that's what remarketing is. Oh, you looked at that. Well, we'll keep reminding you about that until you buy it. Remarketing can work very well. On Facebook, the easiest way to explain it is to tell you what happened to me. I was thinking about booking a flight to Campbelltown and for whatever reason, through the Fly BE website, I got distracted and didn't do it. Later on that day, right in the middle of my Facebook feed, Gary, don't forget your flight to Campbelltown. Still at the price you looked at earlier. Right in amongst my feed. It no longer became an advert, it became a very convenient reminder because I wanted to do it. All of this, any one of you can do using Facebook. It's not difficult. A lot of smaller businesses believe it's just for the big boys. Nonsense. Take advantage of all of this and do it well. Moving on. Um, one other little tip for you, and again, I've used this in the past, so apologies if you've seen it. Don't be afraid to have a bit of fun with social media. Keep in mind the user base on social media, even you know, the wide demographics. Most of them are on there to have fun, to watch videos of cats chasing laser pens and things like that. This is how Iceland do it. Iceland are all, all over social media, not through the official body, the Visit Iceland type scenario. They're on there as Iceland. Hi, I'm Iceland. I'm a country. And they have great fun with it. Their Twitter feed is all about, oops, sorry, just had an eruption. Um, it'll pass soon, don't worry. And it's just a great way of building engagement and enjoyment and people, you know, people go to these sites in droves and engage with the country of Iceland. It's a bit random and a bit bizarre, but just start to think differently about how we do things. Okay, that was pre-visit. What about during visit? What can you do with your customers while they are on your premise? Because they're all there with their mobile phones and with their tablets and some of them with their laptops and various other bits of gadgetry. How are you going to take advantage of that to help them and to help you? Well, you could take the stance, uh, which the National Galleries did just recently, and say, actually, we're not really in favour of it, and um, we're going to ban all selfie sticks. Whoever's got the selfie stick, get it ready with the camera in it, because I want to do a group selfie in just a minute. Um, we're going to ban the selfie stick, which I understand why they did it. Of course I do. It's all about, you know, um, health and safety. Uh, it's all about, you know, the danger to the paintings and so on and so forth. Um, you know, but what about the people who are there sharing their content, promoting them, marketing them, telling their friends that it's a great destination to visit and we're going to have loads of fun and you should be here too? Well, you've just lost a lot of them. Not all of them by any means, but you've just upset a good few people. Why? Because you banned the digital engagement that I want to do as a consumer instead of encouraging that. 
And I urge you to encourage it. I urge you to look for opportunities to invite that digital engagement into your business at every opportunity. Everyone should be offering free Wi-Fi. Uh, make it ubiquitous everywhere. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. What are they going to look at when they're up in the road? Don't worry about it. Just give them it to use um, and you will benefit. Stick the, uh, you, you know, check in here on Facebook. Stick that on your front door. Stick that in your windows. Remind them that you're on Facebook. Remind them to check in. Remind them that you're part of this digital world that they get. Because that's what they want to do anyway. And on Twitter, you know, tell them your Twitter handle. Tell them we are at Ayrshire Aaron. Tell them these things um, and go the extra mile. Maybe on your booking form before they even come, are you asking for a Twitter account? Because you should, in my opinion. And if you're not, um, then ask for their email address at the very least, because with that email address, you can find their Twitter account. All of which is dead easy to do. Uh, and it depends how far you want to go with this. I know a few hotels now, a couple of them doing it because I kind of hinted at them to do it, um, who do this, some would say quite calculating and a bit stalkerish, but I think very calculating and uh, strategic. What do they do? Well, they have a column in a tool called Hootsuite, which is basically just a, a, a social media dashboard to help you do social media better. A column in Hootsuite, which is basically everyone in this column are the people staying in our hotel today who are on Twitter. Why? Just so we can keep tabs. Just so we can see what they're up to. Just so we c if we can see th that they're maybe moaning, so that we can deflect that quicker than we would have, waiting for them to come and moan at reception. Just so we can see that they're talking to their other friends back home, or oh, we're about to go out and explore, you know, Largs today. Well, good when you come down to reception, I'll be on the ball saying, hey, you're looking for things to do in Largs today, let me give you some suggestions. It's a bit weird, you knew I was thinking about doing that. All because the data is there. Twitter's one of these channels that's 100% public, and if you want to go and use it for your benefit to deliver better customer service, not just to stop people, um, then go and use it. Go and use it to deliver a better business. Um, and if you don't use it, I'll play you this, it's a little bit of fun. I realise I'm running out of time, but let me play you this. Um, be careful about not embracing social media and, and not embracing the digital while the customer is at your premise. Because otherwise, and if arguably if you are a bad business, they're going to end up doing things like this. Welcome to the Hans Brinker Budget Hotel, Amsterdam. A hotel whose lack of services and features makes it the most accidentally eco-friendly hotel on the planet. This eco-commitment begins in the lobby. To lessen our impact on the environment, staff do as little as possible for guests. An eco-elevator ensures that the only energy spent going to the room is your own. Take a look around the Hans Brinker Eco Suite. To conserve space and energy, up to seven guests can sleep in a single room. Telephone and 24-hour room servers, mini bar, satellite TV, just a few expenses our hotel is prepared to avoid to save our planet. Eco lighting, yet another feature. Every suite comes with a carbon neutral eco climate control system. It's also easy to use. Guest bathrooms are a celebration of cleanliness and eco-friendliness. Refresh yourself with our range of eco-toiletries and the eco-shower. We also ask you, the guest, to help honour our eco-commitment. Leave the towel on the rack, we won't wash it. Throw the towel on the floor, we still won't wash it. Let's visit the bar where a committed staff... I'm, I'm going to leave it there, you get the point. Now, part of me thinks that, that uh, and I'm pretty sure that there's a bit of a, a kind of a, maybe not quite as true as we'd like to think. I'm not convinced that was. I, I suspect that's more the establishment having a bit of fun, marketing itself in a slightly weird, different way. Um, but, you know, joking aside, you don't need to go far. You know, a quick search of YouTube to find, you know, god-awful hotels, the world's worst hotel. You'll find anything and everything on there. People, because of these things called mobiles and, you know, what you can do with them, they're on capturing everything. 
And it's up to you whether you want to embrace it or whether you want to potentially end up, you know, on YouTube under the, you know, the, uh, the search of world worst uh, B&Bs or whatever it is. So embrace it rather than, than, than fear it. Lastly, moving on, what are you going to do as part of the digital journey after they have visited you? Far too many businesses stop at this point. Some of them don't even get to this point. Once you've gone, you've gone. Absolutely not. Um, how many of you have one of these things? The, the, the fantastic, I'm all for these, I do love them, the visitor book. How many, of you have, how many of you have one of these in your premises? Okay, good, thank you. I love winding up businesses, I'm not going to ask you, but I love winding them up when I, I basically then say, and who sees it? Because not enough of you do anything with it. Who sees it? Well, the next person to leave. Really good. And if they're signing it and we're happy too, then that's all really good. Everyone's happy leaving. Um, and the next person knows that. Oh, fantastic. And what, I mean, what's the point? What's the point in having this thing if you do nothing with the data? At the very least, you know, take the, the, uh, the comments that are in them and add them to your website, to your Facebook, to something, and let more than just the next person see the comment. Uh, and of course, go the extra mile. I'm jesting a little bit. You know, TripAdvisor, it's a no brainer. Um, as I've already said, don't fear it, embrace it. Uh, think about how you can use it for your business in a positive way. Um, get these, uh, get, you know, nudge people. And a few wee kind of tips for you. Um, as I come round to the front. Um, add people to your mailing list. You know, don't forget that, you know, once they book, is that it? What are you going to do with that data? Are you going to add them to the mailing list at the very least? Ask them maybe to confirm, you know, to write a, a, be part of a survey so that they don't just write a little comment in your book when they leave. They give you data to make you become a better business, which is also data which you can use to market yourself. Um, give them something physical. Sorry, the last guy we, we tipped there. Never forget that great opportunity when they're saying goodbye, what can you give them? If, they, if nothing more, a little nudge or a little business card or, a, you know, remember we're on Facebook. And here's a little tip for you if you are on Facebook. The strategy we call make your customer a star. Let them take their own selfies, absolutely. But you take their photo too. You curate it. You're about to leave, gather around, let me take your photo. The family, you know, we're going to miss you. We're going to put this on Facebook later, is that okay? What's the first thing they will do when they get home? They will go and look for themselves on Facebook because everyone is vain and they'll find it. They'll tag themselves, they'll like it and they'll share it. And they've just done your marketing. All because you left them that little something, that little reminder as they're leaving that the journey doesn't stop here. The journey continues. And don't forget what you do beyond the pre, the during and the after. Do something with the data. Don't let these customers pass you by. As it says on the screen, just to check, it does say, I think it says, business as usual is an oxymoron. There's no such thing. Uh, there's no such thing as business as usual. And it's always wrong to assume, and I'm sure looking out at you, you're all very, very intelligent. You all know what oxymoron means. But just in case you didn't, okay, technology will always come to our aid. Define oxymoron. It worked earlier. Check my audio is on. There we go. Try again. Define oxymoron. Oh, it's saying it, it's just not speaking it. I don't know why. It says the definition of oxymoron is conjoining contradictory terms as in deafening silence. Damn you, Google. You see it next time. Um, deafening silence. Hopefully what I wasn't going to hear at the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you very much.